Welcome back to The O Show, everything crypto every day. I've got a very amazing guest with actually a lot of experience in the traditional media industry. I've got Paul. He is the founder of Doge Dash. How are you doing today, Paul? I'm very well. Thanks, Wendy. Thanks for having me on. Thanks for coming on. I'm excited to talk to you because um, we actually have lived in kind of the same vicinity for a little bit. So it's going to, I'm not going to let you say now because they have to wait and see. But um, basically, you guys, this is an episode of 10 Minute Spotlight. Paul has 10 minutes to answer all of my questions about Doge Jazz. If he doesn't answer correctly, he loses. If he answers correctly, he doesn't win anything. And that's just how we run the show. Are you ready, Paul? I think so. As ready as I'll ever be. Okay. 10 minutes on the clock. Please tell us who you are and please do not share all the details about your professional background because the people need to know. Yeah, so my name is Paul Caslin. Uh, I'm a director and creative director, originally in the entertainment industry. So I'm currently the creative director for the um, MTV Video Music Awards. That's been my role for the last four years. So in that role, I'm kind of responsible for the creator for the overall show, all the performances, the stage design, everything you can think of that's on the screen. I'm responsible for that. And on building on that, I'm also creative director for a number of artists from kind of, I've worked with The Weeknd, from Rihanna to Justin Bieber to Shawn Mendes, Camila Cabello, Dua Lipa, like Miley Cyrus, basically anyone you can think of in the entertainment industry. I've been fortunate enough to, to kind of work with them. Nice. That is awesome. So what kind of led you to crypto? Because we're going to learn about Doge Dash, but I need to kind of learn why you went from traditional media to yeah. crypto. I mean, I think it was kind of six months ago, I was, uh, COVID was kind of at its height and I was sitting at home and I'd bought a bit of Bitcoin. I got into a bit of Ethereum. So Wendy on the, around the blockchain show, and it all kind of felt like, yeah, it all kind of felt super simple and and kind of that was a gateway into it. And then I, once you download MetaMask and PancakeSwap and go into that murky world of, of Binance Smart Chain and kind of downloading, like finding the next hype coin, I've realized that I, there's no turning back now. So I was in and I got... Um, so that was six months ago. And then I got burned on a couple of projects where I bought SafeMoon at the top. I bought Shiba Inu at the top. And then I kind of sat down one day and said, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it myself. And I started to research into projects. And I found there was a huge hole in the market for a, a crypto play to earn game okay. that was easy to play for the masses. And I couldn't believe I hadn't been done. I was researching and I was kind of thinking, someone must have thought of this really simple 2D I'm, I'm uh, born in 1983, so my kind of formative years in creator and gaming was Mario, Sonic, and I couldn't believe. No, yes, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> I, was, I remember being addicted. I got goosebumps thinking about like how much I played those games, and I couldn't believe that in Mario you collect coins, and no one had thought of a concept where you collect coins in a game that are actually the coins that you get to your wallet. And I was kind of blown away, and then I had this like epiphany moment, and, and then I thought, you know what, I'm going to do this. And then because I'd been burnt before by kind of VCs, private sales, public sales, I kind of said to myself, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it my way. And I put all my own money in. I self-funded the whole project myself. There are no VCs, no private sales, no public sales. It's all my own money. Um, so it's a big investment, but that's how much I believe in the concept. And it's kind of a, a once in a lifetime opportunity um, for me. And, and so far it's kind of been so well received. I love it. So please tell us, because we we all got to watch an adorable little intro in the beginning, and I love it. I love the website. It's bright. It's, it's colorful. I feel like it's something my five-year-old could probably play if she wants to. And okay. go ahead and tell us what Doge Dash is, and then I'm going to ask you some follow-up questions about it. Yeah. So it's a, a 2D platform game that's got an auto run function. So imagine if you guys are familiar with Mario run on the iPhone, the character runs from the start of the game and your controls are jump and in our case headbutt. So you run through the game. There are 10 levels. Each level has a hundred Doge Dash coins that have a value of a value of 10. So each level holds a thousand coins that you can win. And at the end of the game, if you complete all 10 levels, the coins collected across those 10 levels, which is a maximum of 10,000, are then transferred to your crypto wallet. And the way it's kind of, it's a feedback loop because it cost you 100 Doge Dash coins to enter and the reward is 10,000 on the other side. So, so it's kind of a constant feedback loop and it rewards players who kind of committed to it and give that kind of rewards. Um, and so, yeah, and, and as you say about the a, a five-year-old player, that's my kind of take on it is that I want to be able to, your 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 five-year-old to kind of be able to, your daughter to be able to play the game and make you money because they're so good at playing these games. Oh. So you could, 
you could connect your wallet and the just in the background they could be entertaining themselves making you money over christmas and we're launching the game in december it's important to chris, chris yeah yeah so i wanted to kind of do something for christmas like and so people can stay with their families and kind of play this game um that would be the dream Okay. So exactly. Okay. So I have a couple of questions. So are people going to be, well, you guys have a utility coin, correct? Correct. Yeah. So the coin's designed for like holders as well as the game players, because I think in crypto, it's really important to get adoption from both. So the coin utility is, um, it's got 3% burn on each transaction. We've actually already, in two weeks, we've actually already burned 6% of the total supply. Nice. Um, it's a 3% redistribution to holders. So in every transaction, the holders get more coins. And then there's 3% for marketing as well. And the marketing thing is the thing that I also couldn't believe that not a lot of crypto projects do because to keep something long-term, you need to grow and you need to spend budget to make sure if we want this mass adoption, we need to be able to do it in a way that the whole world can see this. And you need a budget the size of, Apple or a big multinational brand to be able to to do this. And I think a lot of projects kind of miss that and just feel like they're just looking at the short term rather than we're looking at two years, three years down the line. I agree with you 100%. Um, One other thing I wanted to ask is what chain is the token on? So on Binance Smart Chain, uh, again, that comes back to mass adoption. Mm-hmm. And and it's tricky because I would have loved to have been on Ethereum, but I would have hoped it's too expensive and I don't want our audience's win, wins to be kind of taken out by it, the gas fees. And and if, if Ethereum gets to act together, like I, it's a kind of above my head. So Vitalik, if you're watching this, like sort your, sort your stuff out, get it. And then we'll maybe bring Doge Dash to Ethereum, but at the moment, Binance, and then maybe into other chains if things go um, the way we're hoping. Got it. Got it. Question about that. So you are playing Doge or I'm playing Doge Dash. And my daughter takes my tablet and she's like, mom, I'm going to beat you. So she takes my tablet. She's five. She plays. She wins all these Doge Dash coins. Um, How like do you guys have a wallet that's built in or, you know, do I have to connect my MetaMask? Like, how is that aspect going to work? So we're going to launch the web version first and I'll have a wallet connect feature. Again, I wanted to have as many loads, as few load screens as possible. One of the other problems I have with games is you download them. And then you're press, pressing skip, skip, skip for, for like five minutes before you even get to the good stuff. So we're going to have a load screen. It's then going to say the logo of the game, connect wallet. Once you've connected your MetaMask or Trust Wallet, you're then, and you've got coins in your wallet, you'll need 100 Doge Dash coins to enter each run. Then you will be in the game. And then the win at the end will be just be a claim button. So at the end of the game, excuse me, it will say uh, claim coins and whatever you've claimed, Whenever you've won in the run, you'll then be able to claim. But there is a small catch is that you only get to claim those coins if you complete the game. So if you get to level nine and you lose your life, you have to unfortunately go back to the start and play from the start again. Oh no, that's like giving me like early Sega Genesis vibes. (laughs) Exactly. Like when, because I think like the kids these days, they're kind of spoiled with like unlimited lives. And back in when we were playing games, I always remember that your three lives or your one life that you had was so precious. Yes. And I, and I want to kind of, I want to kind of go back to that, those days. And then you went, and then like you're in the middle of the game, you won all these tokens and then mom calls for dinner and you have to go to dinner and you have to shut it off. And it was like the end of the world. And I'm like, ah. yeah, there was no save. There was like, there was no save function. You're totally right. Actually, was there a save function in Mon- 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 Sonic? There wasn't, there wasn't. Not in Mon- Sonic, not in Sonic. <laughs> A brutal uh, terrible yeah. all right let's let's okay all right so we talked about the utility of the coin we talked about crypto gaming made easy but i yeah. want to know because i was looking at the roadmap you guys have nfts coming so talk to me a little bit about how nfts are going to impact doge dash and when we can expect those and how that whole sub ecosystem is going to work yeah so nfts have been a kind of thing Obviously, uh, once you get into crypto, you're then aware of NFTs. And my kind of background is, as well as doing the creative for these performances, it's kind of visuals, it's art direction, it's kind of design of artwork and those kind of things. So I feel like I'm well, well placed to, again, bring some of those principles that I know from the entertainment industry into the NFT space and do something that's super unique for Doge Dash. So we're going to be doing an NFT drop. We've got an incredible artist who's working on the, um, on the NFTs at the moment. And then there's going to be some some kind of competitions around launch time. We're going to, in the roadmap, actually, it's it's slated that November for NFTs, but I'm thinking of just pushing that slightly further into closer to game launch because I feel like that's when there'll be more public attention and I feel as though that's when 
the game and the NFT wants to kind of be in synergy together so that the two things are, are, are complementing each other and, and increasing. So the NFT community are coming in and the game community. And I think if we do that, again, it's all about mass adoption. It's all about the people outside of crypto. Uh, like, I, and I don't want to get your five-year-old daughter into crypto uh, just yet. I think she needs maybe another 15, 20 she, years. Ago. She's ready. She's already a Bitcoin holder. Wow. Okay. She's going to be rich. Yeah, she's already a Bitcoin holder. I liquidated her savings and we bought Bitcoin and she's very excited. She's very happy. She's like, thank you, mom, for doing such a good job making me rich. I was like, you're very <laughs> She's obviously very educated to her five-year-old. She, I... she totally is. She totally is. So when we're talking about the NFTs for Doge Dash, like can people buy the, the Doge Dash NFTs and then like use those for gameplay? Like could they like buy like an NFT that represents them, their personality, and then like use that to play? Oh, that's a timer, but I want to keep going for a second because I've got a couple more questions. Um, but how would uh, that work? Like, do, could they use the NFTs to play in the game or no? Uh, I, I, in terms of the launch, our focus at the moment is making a really addictive playable game. Okay. And then once we've got that locked in and it's all kind of working and everyone's happy with the functionality of it, that's when we'll start kind of adding these cherry on the cake. So my, my ideal dream would be that you would be able to... Um, to use buy an NFT of a of a skin and be able to use that skin within the game. Um, that's yeah. So you can play as your character because I think that's a beautiful thing about crypto. And I'm a big kind of Ready Player One and like Metaverse kind of fan as well. And I love the idea of being able to you can be anyone you want in crypto. And I love that kind of thing about the space. Awesome. Okay, I don't know if I missed anything or not. So if I missed something, please make sure to tell us. And then do you have do you guys have any special announcements besides the actual launch of the game that you want to talk tell everyone? I mean, it depends when this comes out, Wendy, but I'm actually doing a burn of my own personal wallet. So when I of and it's currently valued at um, seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Um, just like to, uh, my whole thing with my community is to be transparent with everyone. Good, good. And I, when I launched the coin, I never expected it to go this big. And I put, put five BNB in when it was like at a hundred thousand market cap, it's now at a 30 million market cap. So that, that wallet is actually the biggest wallet. Um, and I, as it was growing, I was kind of feeling like, I don't feel this is fair in the community. So I calling it the burn baby burn event. It's it's on Saturday at 12 PST time. And whatever the value of that wallet is, I'm going to either it's genius or the most stupid thing anyone's ever done, but I'm going to ban everything in that wallet uh, at, um, at high noon to on Saturday. Oh my goodness. Okay. But, All right. Yeah. Okay. I hope, I, yeah. I don't know if it's the cleverest thing in the world or the worst. So anyway, I've, I've kind of said I'm doing it now. And I feel like my whole thing with, with transparency in this community is that I come from a business world where everything is as it seems. And in crypto, I feel like, I've been burned so many times and I don't want that to happen to anyone else. I was like, that's my, that's how I was brought up. Well, if it makes you feel better, I have a wallet somewhere with a particular coin, which I will not say what it was, but um, it is worth half a million dollars and I don't have access to it because oh. the, the coins are worthless and the team refuses to swap them. So just know, just know you are not alone. You are not alone. That makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> just know you are not alone. I look at that amount um, every yeah. once in a while and I'm like, <laughs> But just know that that's part of the game. That's part of crypto. And um, we do things and sometimes they pay off greatly. So you have no idea what this action will, um, what, what kind of opportunities it will provide later on. Yeah. And also just one last thing on that, the actual, because it's redistribution and, and a burn, the actual holders will get 3% of the whole transaction. So whether it's a million dollar transaction by this time tomorrow, then they'll get 3% of of that transaction. So everyone wins apart from me, but wow. I can, uh, no, you are, you are winning because you said you were going to do something and you're gonna exactly. actually going to do it. Um, and you have an obligation now to the community because you're the founder. So I think it is a very admirable thing you're doing and, um, I love it. I'm here for it. So thank you. Thank you, Wendy. And have a great rest of your day. Oh, wait, before we go, you guys, if you want to learn more about Doge Dash and anything that Paul is working on, the links will be down below. I like this project. I like this idea. I like the gameplay and I like that it's like really fun and bright and friendly. So again, Paul, thank you so much for coming on and good luck on your big burning tomorrow. Thank you, Wendy. And hopefully we can do this again closer to game launch and you can play the game because I know you're a gamer yourself. That would be so much fun. Okay, thank you so much. Bye everyone. That's Wendy. Bye-bye now.